morning troops, another day, another drain. And like most of you, scratching around looking for somewhere that isn't in flood. So come on a very shallow drain, it hasn't disappointed. Sometimes it can be really high and bombing through to relieve flood waters elsewhere, but at the moment it looks like it's in tip top condition. There's a lovely colour to it. It's a gentle breeze blowing up the drain. It's uh, a lovely November morning, so what we're going to do is we're going to attack it with uh, static deads. It's too shallow to fish with paternosters, or you can't even pop up baits on this drain because the seagulls will have them. The seagulls will be able to see them. You know, you're fishing in three foot of water, so the static deads, and hopefully. We're going to kick off the season because you know we've had plenty. Of, we've had a few doubles at the start of the season. We've had a good run. We've only had one blank, which is not bad. So we've got three rods out. Left hand rod is a roach about the size of a uh, two to three ounces, and it's lip booked as I've been doing all of them this season. A circle hook and that's a static dead. The middle rod I've gone with a static dead sardine hair rigged. We'll see how that performs. The only problem with these hair rig baits is that uh, the run conversion for smaller fish is quite hard so I'm hoping something big picks it up. And in the right hand rod we have a very small roach no more than an inch and a half long. That's, again, that's lip hooked on a single circle hook. The middle rod has not got a circle hook on it, it's got a curved hook, a carp hook. So I'm looking at, you know, the circle hooks on the hair rig baits. Maybe they're being masked, maybe they're facing the wrong way. They're just not, they don't convert as well as. I'd like, so I've gone with a curved hook. Hopefully we get a run and I'll strike into the fish rather than wind down and hopefully we'll have ourselves a pike on that. That's a lovely mall. Oh look <laughs> I shouldn't turn away, I keep turning away to look at the look at the uh, floats and it goes out of focus and goes all dark. Yes, yeah, so it's a lovely morning. Got three rods out. Don't know what I'm gonna do for the whole day. Don't know whether I'm gonna Depends how the sport goes. If it's dire, I might move at midday. But we'll see. You know what I mean, you never know. You know what I mean, it's one of those places. This I keep saying it. You can turn up, have a session of a lifetime, where you can turn up and want to slit your wrists. So, <laughs> let's have a nice cup of coffee in a porridge pot, and then I'll show you the swim. Here we have it, the ball rushes, the right hand rod, I've got them all mid water, so mid channel, <laughs> got them all mid channel at the moment, as I say it's a very shallow drain, but I will go near bank, far bank, as I move the baits around, but at the moment I've got them all mid channel, There's a right hand rod, so that's a roach, only about an inch and a half long. There's the middle rod, so that's a whole sardine, hair rigged. Again, it's a static dead. And the left hand rod is all the way down there. 
again mid water and that's another roach but the far bank there's a lot of murky water and reed bed so I might get a bait over there a bit lively actually uh, over there where are we looking at now I like the look of that got the overhanging brambles they're protected That'll be the first recast. fishing about an hour and a half two hours it just goes to show you you never can tell from surface what's going on underneath and uh, the conditions look pretty benign on top you know so the water had a nice tinge to it it's not pumping through or anything but what's happening is there's a hell of a lot of sediment and silt and silkweed coming down the drain from the flood waters further upstream and it's masking the hook and it's masking the bait so that's something I'm going to have to watch I've just uh, with that conditions being like that I've just decided to pump all three with fish oil really give them a good injection of it and we'll see how it plays out but obviously the outside rods that are hooked directly through the snout of the fish, they're not too bad. It's the hairy bait I'm worried about. That that hook is coming back really masked. So gonna have to watch that. Might might pop it up a bit. I say it's dark enough for seagulls might not see it popped up, so I might pop it up a bit and see if that improves things. Or I might just change the whole trace and then just uh have three baits that are all directly hooked but at the moment it's, a, it's only an hour and a half in no instant hit no pike on the baits first thing as sometimes you hope so it's a you know it's a waiting game or traps are set yes yeah, you just had a shower nothing major traps are set we're all fair to go it's just getting some interest now you know I thought I had, the left hand rod was beeping a little bit but that was weed so as I say there's a lot of stuff under the surface going through the swim that you can't see but hopefully the boosted baits will work Well here we are in the afternoon, complete 360, change of venues, not even a change of swim, a change of venues altogether. Let's hope the afternoon is better than the morning. I mean I was, it was comfortable fishing, don't get me wrong, I mean if you looked around all the waters in a 50 mile radius, <laughs> that's probably the most comfortable fishing you're going to find. You know, it was, it was pumping through a little bit but not nothing major. One ounce, one ounce lead can hold bottom. It's got a bit of silt and a bit of silkweed on your line every cast. But other than that, it was very, very comfortable fishing. But there weren't no pike in that swim. There weren't no prey fish, there weren't no pike in that swim. So I packed up, went about half a mile upstream, 
and there was three or four anglers there so that was that section I wanted to fish out the window and I could, so I drove around to another drain didn't like the look of it chocolate brown pumping through loads of debris and I thought well why not fish the flooded river again I know I'm going to have to stretch to myself no one's going to be fishing this in flood it's just a case of if we find the pike or not so I'm quite happy got three rods out two the running water Paternoster rigs and one static dead and we're uh, we're margin fishing you can't you can't cast out any more than the rod rod length out it's bombing through it like it was in the last video so that's not an option but I don't mind fishing the margins I don't mind fishing closely I mean if it wasn't in flood you're gonna catch pike in the margins so I'm hoping they're hugging this they're hugging this bank that's what I'm hoping you know it's uh, quite warm I'm gonna have to get this off I'm gonna have a cup of tea I mean I was driving around for half hour looking for somewhere to fish couldn't find anywhere Swallowed it, I thought, sod it, go up 10 minutes from home. That way I can fish a little bit later if I have to. Still keeping the good books by getting home at a reasonable time. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the plan. Another day of flooded river fishing. Hopefully we'll have some pike out. Last session on here in flood conditions, we only had the one jack and that was an instant hit. I haven't had an instant hit yet. So, you know, my, my left hand rod's been out half hour, you know, so we ain't had a touch. But, if there's pike here, they'll find them baits. So I'm going to inject them with oil after half an hour, and then uh, just going to play it by ear, and hopefully the nab us a few pike. And maybe the first 20 of the season, you never know. You never know. I mean, this river can throw them up, so it's just where, wherever they are. How long's a piece of string? <laughs> How many more old sayings can I get in one sentence? I don't know. But yeah, we're fishing. I'm happy with the stretch I'm fishing. You know, it's reed, it's reed bed all the way along. So I'm fishing the margins just off the reed beds. So if there's pike patrolling in them slack waters, you know I mean, we should be in. <laughs> he says, let's get cracking, let's get fishing. Here's the swim, a long, wide straight, still in flood. And the rods are peppered along the reed bed down in front of me. Left hand rod. That's got a static dead bait on there. It's a roach. At two ounces. No interest in that so far. Middle rod. There's a patted nostered roach, about 18 inches off the deck. And the right hand rod all the way down there. You can see that float. That has had a run on it, on a whole sardine. I think the bait was too big, so I've gone with a medium-sized sprat, which is a lot better. Hopefully that will get wolf down. But yeah, we've had one run since we've been here. Which is always a good sign, but we need fish on the bank. Well, we've been here a couple of hours now. We've had one run on a whole sardine, which I missed. I think that was a small fish grabbing a, <laughs> a big bait, but you know, it bit the bait clean and half, and that was it. Fish never returned. It's very calm. It's very eerie. It's almost as if something's gonna happen. It really is.
you're very limited to where you can place your baits on a flooded river so you're restricted in a sense of the water you can fish and if the pike are not in front of you you've got to wait for them to come to you so it's a waiting game Will the pike come first or will the darkness come first? That's the thing. Just like the other day, they stopped running the river off and the water level's slowly starting to rise and uh, I might not be able to stay here till dark. I can, I've had a little walk out, I can, get me, <laughs> I can get me bank sticks back with me wellies on, so at the moment it's not too bad, but if it's any higher, I'll have to pack up. That's it, enjoy it. <laughs> Start talking and the jet goes over. The wind's dropped, it's very calm. I've seen movement from silverfish, so hopefully there's silverfish here. There might be pike here. But I don't know what's going to beat me. I don't know whether the water levels are going to beat me or the darkness before we can nab one. But so far we've had two venues today and we haven't had much luck at all. So. Got to stick at it. It's not uh, not the end of the world. It's a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. I love this time of year. The skies are fantastic. You know, it's jumper weather. You know, I mean, I'm not. It's not cold either. It's. I suppose the frost would have been nice this morning, but other than that, it's been a lovely day. Just hasn't produced any pike for us, so we're going to sit here, have a nice hot cup of coffee. Hopefully, I've got to keep an eye on that water level as well as we floats. <laughs> but we're, uh, it's the last hour of daylight, so it's, I mean, this is, uh, if you're going to get a last minute fish, what I've set it, so hopefully we're going to get that one. Try again, shall we? Oh, all I want to do is say goodbye. <laughs> Not having it. Hopefully, we'll nab one before it gets dark, but we'll wait and have to wait and see. But you know, it feels like it's going to do a fish. You know, I'm all knotted up inside. It really does feel like you know it's going to produce a fish any moment now. So, if it doesn't, and this is goodbye. Thanks for watching. Sorry, there hasn't been any action at all in the video today. It's been one of those days where nothing's happened, you know, it's just absolutely nothing's happened. No nature really to speak of. And then another jet's going to come over again now. So thanks for watching troops. I really do appreciate it.